All right, so Bunny, today we have a very exciting guest, Bunny Michael. Can we have you introduce yourself in your own words and tell us a little bit about what you do in the world? Sure. My name is Bunny Michael. Um, I'm an artist, a writer, a visual artist. I'm an actor. Um, I have a podcast. And all of those different things are based around the same message, which is about accessing your higher self, which is the part of you that sees the world, sees other people, sees yourself through the lens of love, through a higher consciousness state where you're not entrapped by the conditioning of the world. Mm -hmm. So within all my work, whether it's like the podcast or writing lyrics for a song or making a meme on my Instagram. I'm always trying to talk about different aspects of the deconditioning process and how we can get closer to our true selves or our, our spiritual life, um, however you want to put it. And the part of us that is the witness to the experience rather than being so trapped within the experience. Yeah, I love that. And if anyone has, um, I, I know it's only one of your projects and I imagine it's like the, the Instagram and the memes and then the reels, the reels you've been making, that's such a good, like, it's perfect for uh, kind of putting the memes into action. Um, have, have you liked yeah. them, the new reels? Yeah, it's really like, fun. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's been really fun. And it kind of, well, I actually made videos that were similar to that um, like a couple of years ago on my Instagram that was like with my friend and we just made these split screen videos where I talked to myself in various situations, like me and my higher self. Mm -hmm. And we actually applied for a grant and did a Kickstarter and we shot like a web series based on that. And it's like in final stages of being created so when reels came out it was cool because I felt like you know so much of what I share on Instagram is very visual and it's a it's a completely different experience when you have somebody like saying it to you mm. and yeah. I also think it's fun to yeah. make that <laughs> and like it's nice to be like show my personality and it and because sometimes you know it's like the stuff that I'm talking about is like really serious you know and yeah. it's it's and so it's nice to show that it's not really that serious it's it's very like um it it it's we don't have to take it that seriously I guess mm -hmm. and we can kind of find the playfulness and the silliness in the mistakes that we make and the way we think and how, you know, we're all just kind of on the same path and yeah. we can laugh at, we can laugh at ourselves sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. And I love, um, there's so much like compassion and, and patience in, in all of your content around like, even just like allowing ourselves to be small and to wonder and be like, why do I feel this way? Or kind of like, so I, I feel like thematically so many of um, your videos and your memes come back to like what, like how we internalize ourselves as the problem when it's like, it's, we're not the problem <laughs> and, and cutting straight through that, but like a really allowing ourselves to have that experience and like being in that, the smallness. Um, and then like, the patience of the higher self of just being like, it's okay. Here's why yeah. it's not you. It's, yeah. it's the whole bullshit system. It's everything. Yeah. Yeah. Because the, the fundamental message isn't like, Oh, it's not actually about like discovering something new. It's like, it's about being in the present moment with compassion, mm. you know? So at every stage of the growth, it, your, your higher self is there saying, you know, not judging you, mm -hmm. you know, because yeah. I think a lot of times in the spiritual community or self-help or, you know, when you're on a path to try to create more awareness in your life, you can actually start to become way harder on yourself when you kind of know you could do better. And then you really beat yourself up if you, you know, got triggered again or, you know, got in a fight with your friend or whatever. And the whole point for me about like my connection to my spiritual life is that, you know, 
that spirit is always um, is non-judgmental and is just always there to support you and sees you like a child, you know, who's just growing yeah. and how we can treat ourselves that way, you know, and how we can nurture ourselves. Um, and, and actually that approach as the, probably a lot of parents know that approach actually gets better results than shaming and judging and criticizing. Yeah, absolutely. That's such a good point, especially as you said, like in, as we're like getting into inner work or personal development or therapy or all, all of these things, these things where we start to have awareness around like, oh my God, I've been doing what? Or like that, I, whoa, this is my pattern or blah, blah, blah. And, and we, you know, I always say to my clients, there's, there's a real moment of opportunity in that. Um, Cause we can opt into like, feeling embarrassed and shaming ourselves for it when we come into greater awareness i'm like oh my god i can't believe i've been whatever i've been doing right and like mm -hmm. the opportunity is always to to celebrate ourselves for instead instead of going spiraling mm -hmm. into like the embarrassment and shame to like celebrate ourselves and to understand that the when it comes to like stepping into new patterns or like growing or, or evolving in a, in a direction that's healthier for you, the old shit's going to come, it is going to come up and it's going to come up again and it's going to come up again. And the becoming, the evolving is in choosing, choosing the voice of the higher self or like choosing, um, what are new, what were the new pattern we're opting into or whatever it might be again and again and again and again. And it happens through mm -hmm. repetition. And, um, that's just so, it's so important. Um, cause I, I so hear what you're saying. And I notice that in client work or like even myself too, around mm -hmm. like, I'm aware of this now. Can it just not be a thing anymore? And it's like, no, we can be really patient with ourselves and like really gracious with ourselves. Um, every time it comes up and then cho choose something else instead. And it just kind of starts to dissolve the oldness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think a lot of it is really just kind of becoming curious about it um, so that you build the separation between who you are and, you know, those types of patterns yeah. and become less identified with them. So in the beginning, when you're realizing things, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to change your behavior right in the beginning. You can just notice it and it starts to, you know, have less control over you when you find, when you find more of that witness approach to it. Yeah. Because a lot of times our triggers, it's like, we shouldn't expect us to get over our triggers. It's okay to have them. It's just like learning how to work with them mm. and learning how to surround yourself with people who are sensitive to them you know, like our, in our partnerships or our friendships, it's like, yeah, and we have trauma and we shouldn't like feel like we can't be affected by that trauma anymore just because we're aware of why we're having those reactions, you know, because constantly things are happening in our world that's reminding us of those experiences every day. You know, we can't, we get new information and, um, there's so much going on that's just putting us back into those places again and again. So it's really just, you know, constantly not judging yourself and, and those triggers and being like, Oh, look at that over there. It's happening again. And it won't be so scary. Hmm. Yeah. And, and like staying with yourself in it, just being like, if no one else is there, like I'm with myself in this every single time. Um, I really love that. I really love it. Um, I'm curious, well, I'm curious about a lot of things, but I'll start with the question about like you as an artist and, and your body of work across different mediums kind of centering around, um, this topic, um, or this connection with the, or like creating the connection with the higher self. How did you come to that? Or like, what was your process or your journey as an mm -hmm. artist like what did you play with prior to this like how did you come mm -hmm. to um how did you come to be where you are in terms of like what really interests you and what really fascinates you and what you want to create work around I think to kind of I mean I was always like a creative person but I think when I was in my 20s 
I was making music, I was performing, um, and I was really struggling with, like, you know, my ego and being afraid of not making it, quote unquote, making it. And it was always just like a miserable, <laughs> like, process. Yeah. Even though I had like some success and, you know, was doing all these things that on the outside would seem to be like really enjoyable experiences, I wasn't able to enjoy them. And I found myself in like abusive relationships and, you know, situations where I was just kind of, you know, having a really hard time. And then I started kind of peeking into a little bit of spiritual reading, like some Eckhart Tolle. And then I was doing like yoga and it started kind of things started kind of like fizzing in my mind. And then um, I like did some plant medicine healing. And then like, after a while, I was like, I, I realized that what my art had been lacking um, was me understanding what it was trying to give me. Mm. And, um, I realized that it, it wasn't like that I was being given gifts and that gifts were meant to be shared and it wasn't really about me. And it was just about moving through me and my, my experience of who I am, like creating the form of it. But ultimately I didn't really have ownership over it. And when I realized that, that it wasn't about me, that it was about giving to other people and for a higher purpose, it was direct, it healed me in the same moment because it was so much easier for me to create after that. Mm. I, cause I didn't have this like clingy, um, part of me that was like, Oh, if you're going to like, or are they not going to like, and I, I, don't, I just won't do it, you know, and, and, and that type of like paralysis. Yeah. And for some reason it just kind of like clicked and I what right when I realized that actually and I just was able to kind of create a lot of things all of the time and still am able to now I still get insecure obviously I'm not like but no but staying grounded in why I'm doing it which I think a lot of people who are artists you know really struggle because they don't they kind of forget why they're doing it. And, yeah. and if you're only doing it, you know, to have a certain kind of success, of course, it's gonna, you know, make you miserable because that's not sustainable. But what's sustainable is the why. Mm -hmm. Like that's never gonna go away, you know? Like you might, it might change its form. You might start doing drawings instead of paintings or whatever. But as long as you know why you're doing it, it, you're never going to run out of reasons to do it, you know? So it kind of made it sustainable. And then I just sort of started having fun with exploring the different ways, but also, sorry to um, talk so much, but the, the memes kind of happened out of that because right when I was having this sort of like realization of what art is, I, those like evil Kermit memes were going around. It was like 2016. <laughs> I remember those, yeah. 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 Oh, and it was like the lower thought or the evil thought. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. And so I was like, what if, you know, like there was like the higher thought? Because I was already like trying, you know, I was already, something was coming through me. Yeah. And I had like this crazy meditation where I saw myself like holding myself too. So there was like a lot of factors, but I started writing it and I made a couple and I saw that this astrologer, Channy Nicholas, do you know Channy Nicholas? I don't. I saw that. She, oh, she's an amazing astrologer who I was a real like fan of at the time. I still am. But I saw she liked it, like one of the memes. And I had just done a workshop of her. So I sent her a DM and I was like, I just did this workshop and it helped me like realize that, you know, this stuff, whatever. And she was like, are you a Libra? And I was like, yes. And she was like, keep going. And I, from that day on, I just decided to dedicate the Instagram to that yeah for the rest and it sort of set myself up to always have to think that way yeah yeah it's so cool it's really funny you said that with the holding of yourself because I have I whenever I envision my higher self too it's always like this white 
blank space and then like my higher self just kind of like chuckle like holding myself as a baby and just kind of like chuckling and being like oh you silly silly little thing (laughs) yeah yeah and what I'm hearing too it sounds like there's like um it's kind of like a simultaneous like releasing the responsibility of like outcome and like this has to be this or this has to like mean this about me so like a releasing of that and then also kind of um stepping into the responsibility of like I have this gift and I have this way of expressing that really resonates with people and really helps people um and I can feel that from you too of just like oh there's a piece of just like letting it flow through you and that's yeah really really cool that's really cool. Yeah, it's weird, you know. Sometimes I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm like, it's what like, is happening? I, I, but it's no. like I can't stop. I can't yeah. stop it. You know, it's just like, all right, like that's like what I'm here for. Like, I guess I'll just surrender to it, you know. Yeah, and and that it gets to nourish you as a person too. And that that's another question I want to bring in is like how, um in terms of like self-talk with yourself, I'm going to imagine that you were drawn to this kind of like the journey you described. And then also, um, I'm just going to imagine that, uh, through creating, uh, this content, creating this art, that it has shifted your self-talk a lot. Um, I'm curious what that's been like and, and like your internal world and your relationship with yourself. I mean, I still struggle like everybody does. It's one thing like to know it. It's another thing to like, you know, be practicing it and be like reminding yourself of it. I mean, having this as a career obviously helps me to stay on this path and to be constantly kind of checking in as I'm thinking about what to write because I like to just write things and put it out right away because I feel like it's all about like kind of tapping into the consciousness of the moment. Yeah. Um, but I learn a lot from, I've learned a lot from what people, the audience has said um, and the feedback. I learned a lot about myself through the whole process about like self-criticism and, you know, a constant battle of like trying to like, you know, change the world, but also like be happy and and take care of myself. And yeah, I have, I have struggles and I have a lot of negative internal talk Mm -hmm. and I have just been kind of working on it and trying to get better at it. But then, you know, you reapproach your issues at different levels and stuff like that. But I do, I do feel proud of myself for, I can kind of look back at confidence through the realization that like I'm whole just how I am and you know doing that kind of healing work so yeah it's not easy I mean I'm I'm having a hard time right now just like everybody else yeah it is like the Olympics in relationship with self this year (laughs) absolutely Uh, yeah and I I really hear you on that kind of the being with like really wanting to show up for other people and then also really needing to show up for yourself too and and kind of like being in that dynamic it's never a like today is it, it's never static it's it's always mm-hmm. ebbing and flowing and yeah I'm curious um oh you disappeared sorry I had to I had to like yeah. I noticed you you cut out for a little second um earlier and it, it you it was just um I couldn't hear you but you're uh, you were in slow motion and you kind of looked like an old, um, like an old time movie star. Cause you, it, you like, it was slow motion and there was like emotion coming through. It was oh, actually- really? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I yeah. hope my Wi-Fi connection is strong. Yeah, no worries. It's been good so far. It just cut out. Okay. Um, cool. but power ahead. Um, I wonder, uh, and this is something I mentioned before we started recording, <laughs> um, with my clients, how we, this is something I do with myself and I work with my clients around like um, getting to know different parts of ourselves and kind of giving them avatars, I call them, or characters or like um, 
for me, and you know, I, I think what's fun about this territory is there's no correct way to do it. There's no like, this is the framework. It's like, how do you want to play mm -hmm. with like the different versions of ourselves and, and how like, maybe if we're nervous about something, we want to tap into like, whew, this version that we can give a fun name to and give kind of a character to. Um, and I know for me, that's so, so helpful. And like, whenever mm. I am having an internal struggle or um, nervous or, or like there's dissonance, I, I, I try to look inward and I'm like, okay, which parts of myself are in disagreement right now? And then kind of like play out a conversation. Um, I'm curious if, uh, if that's something you play with, um, if that's something you play with of kind of like different characters, and I imagine it is with your art and like how you express yourself in different ways. Yeah, I think like, well, I, I do that in relationships, mm -hmm. like me and my spouse, we have like a name for when somebody's being like grumpy, like it's kind of like you're you're charlie like you're like, you're like oh charlie's here you know or because uh, it's like it's so it's from like cheer up charlie like the Willy wonka movie or something i don't know how we got it but um and that's like been helpful because you know the separation obviously like the witness that it's not not identifying with the emotions and the feelings of the moment um and doing those types of characters I mean, I think m mostly with myself, I'm so like entrapped with the me higher self, like duality. Mm -hmm. And I sort of am always, I have like six planets in Libra, in including like my sun and Venus and my ascendant. So I'm always like trying to, you know, find the other side to create the like a uh, harmonizing composition. And sometimes it's like, can be difficult because I think sometimes I will say a point of view, even if I don't agree with it, in order to bring that to the surface. And that can be a little bit off-putting to people. <laughs> so, I mean, something. so as I'm like negotiating the parts of me, it mostly comes in like the duel and like how, you know, yeah. how to like mold myself to any given situation that's going to help the situation. Like I feel like more like a chameleon sometimes in the sense of like, if I'm in a social situation and I, and I can sense that, you know, we need support in this area of this, then I can become that person or that person or that, and stuff mm. like that. Yeah. So, so yeah. in that way, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That's so interesting what you just said about like, um, kind of like putting forth a perspective that like you're not sure what what I and correct me if I'm wrong but it sounds like putting forth a perspective like you're kind of flirting with or you're playing with and you're you're like yeah. trying it on yes and, and then like balancing that with the duality of the other voice and kind of like letting it be yeah. a conversation yes oh that's so interesting because I think that yeah. with the higher self stuff too and I think a lot of people you know sometimes when people like push back it's it's hard to have nuance in you know writing like on instagram you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> and sometimes like i will want to like express like an idea of higher self that is sort of nuanced and is sort of just kind of playing with what would be like the other side of this mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily mean it's the truth you know it doesn't necessarily mean like this is right and that's wrong it's showing like how we like are you know able to shift our perspective and in the ability to change your perspective you have free will you know to do that i'm not saying that you should be looking at it this way you know i'm just showing like what a perspective a different perspective would look like when you do it from a point of compassion hmm. and you know i think that people have all different kinds of ways and how they move through the world and that might not work for them you know and i me and my spouse get in like philosophical arguments all the time because i'll be like we'll be talking about politics or something like that and i'll be like yeah but what about like this 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 and my spouse can't really understand why i'm like they're like why are you defending that? i'm like i'm not i just like 
I want just feel like you have to say that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in, in order to fully understand what's happening. And it, it comes from this place where I just want things to be under. I want people to like feel common ground and feel like, you know, we are all equal in the experience. Um, I just have the such passion to get to like the heart of it, I guess. Yeah. And, and I love that because you're, you're really exploring and allowing multiple things to be true at the same time <laughs> and multiple, yeah. some, someone's truth, like is not necessarily someone else's truth and they could be in direct opposition and that doesn't necessarily make this truth not true and this truth not true and like right. I, I feel the libraness in that too of just like wanting to um it's not so much devil's advocate it's more like wanting to consider the whole spectrum of experience and like the whole spectrum or kind of like calibrate to here are all the possible truths within this within this truth <laughs> to get new yeah. cuz i i'm yeah. saying me you yeah. know i'm saying me i'm not saying you i'm saying yeah. me i'm saying i think this way <laughs> like right. i am fully i fully think this you know yeah and then how do i like shift it you know yeah and also i think that's so valuable too to like especially right now when there's just like so much like per what we're talking about of like damn people are living in really different truths right yeah. um it's so valuable within ourselves to like I, I love even the word you're using of like shifting like shifting in the polar or like the um the duality um but like allowing ourselves to to try on different perspectives and like giving ourselves permission to kind of like calibrate to what is true for us by like having shifted into like, well, what, what would this feel like? Hmm. What would be the opposite? Mm -hmm. Like what mm -hmm. would that be like, hmm, what would be like, what would be the counterpart or like, what would have the higher self? What would the like smaller self or, you know, whatever we want to mm -hmm. call it. Mm, mm -hmm. I can like, I don't know how to put this into words, but I just got such a strong visual of how you, how you describe that. That's so cool. And I, I feel like the, yeah. the Libra balancing, shifting duality, calibration in that. Yeah. And it's also like really kind of, and that's why sometimes it comes out really funny mm. because it's like we, the way that we think about things can sometimes be like a completely 180 direction from yeah. actually like what makes common sense. And the way that the world that we is organized is also like completely 180 from what actually would make sense, really make sense for people. Yeah. And it's, it's like, and it's, it's kind of comical, you know, when you kind of break it down. And so I try to like, kind of break down a feeling or an idea or like, you know, like say for example, like today I posted about jealousy and like, you know, what's really like going on with, with jealousy. Cause it's like, you're like, it's like, you're ex like, say you're like, afraid that somebody you're jealous of some other person hitting on your partner or whatever so you just sit there and experience the jealous you experience the reality of that yeah like that's what you're doing to yourself you're basically like let me just like put that reality in my brain so it's not really like you're afraid of that happening you're actually making it happen in your mind and fully experiencing it in your body and just punishing yourself you know and and I guess I just like to really think about like what are just to build more awareness as to like what our minds are really doing um and yeah yeah and how our minds that's so interesting how our minds are really like to your point too around like so much of like what has been coming to the surface this year is just like more and more awareness and I, I think like connecting to what we were talking about early on around like the awareness and then the like wanting to shame when awareness surfaces and, and instead like staying with the awareness but like how there is this duality right now of like how everything is set up systematically being in direct opposition to what is good for most people and like that yeah. that being a duality as well and then and like what you're describing too of like the duality uh, or of like what is actually happening versus like our internal creation or projection of what is happening. And wow, 
I'm just like starting to get a glimpse into the all the different layers you're playing with. That's so cool. Yeah. Or also yeah. just like it's actually what's happening in your mind is actually happening. You know, like that's the only the our our yep. reality is literally just the, our thoughts and how we're interpreting what we see. You know, the things that we see aren't actually really there. I mean, if you want to get like all like yes. I don't know, quantum I physics do. about it, yes. It's actually like an illusion. Yeah. You know. And we're just experiencing like a dream state, like matrix. And um, I think we're here to turn it into the most beautiful dream that we can. And in order to do that, we have to be conscious, become more conscious of what that our own power to do that. Um, But yeah, it's, it's a trip. Yeah. Yeah. And it's such a trip. I'm, I've been going deep into, um, kind of like intuiting a lot of this and then wanting to like be able to understand it and going deep into like the Joe Dispenza <laughs> whoa our, oh our yeah creating the reality and like yeah it's so it's so trippy it's so trippy and it's also like mm-hmm. it is a um there's responsibility and and like the energy we're tapping into and the thoughts where we're um ha- having and like what we're focusing on and what we're creating and like I know I feel that as like um you know I was I really resonated with what you said around kind of like tapping into the why and like any fear that I feel around like being visible or like being like showing up or like my own insecurities which come up and like they're you know they will surface and that's okay but like really being like whoa but I have people to talk to I have people like there's a world to be created. And like, this is how I feel tapped into helping to create that in both like the physical realm and the energetic realm and like, ooh, yeah. So mysterious. It's so mysterious. Yeah it, yeah, it is. It is. And I guess the, what I feel comfort in, you know, cause you know, within all of this stuff and with all of these discoveries and, you know, all this mystery is that, for me and my experience is that our higher self, which is the connection to the whole, you know, the, the nameless energy or source, however you want to put it, that we're all connected to is that we're always held in that. And as much as what's going on right now in front of us, even in the face, not to get too dark, even in the face of death, yeah, knowing, knowing like that you have a home and that it, it's eternal and you know for me having those beliefs and the or the that for me having a sense of that or feeling like I experience that's my experience it makes the play of all of this stuff a little bit less like existential crisis anxiety inducing because mm-hmm. <laughs> it can be to talk about you know this stuff it can make yeah. people feel really uneasy and it's scary to start to see like reality as 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 really just however you relate to it and um and but it's also very empowering yeah yeah and to your point earlier around just kind of like having a a sense of lightness or humor around it too um yeah I feel that and and it's such a great way to to relate to the heaviness it's just being like oh how can I how can I shift around this or how can I be with this in a, um, in a way where like we can feel that safety and staying connected with ourselves and staying connected with our knowing. (sighs) Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So what, um, as we have people listening, um, what, what are, some truths you're really playing with recently or like anything that you feels true for you right now that you would want to share anything at all um and that's a heavy question feel (laughs) lightly there's a lot lot. um my grandmother passed away last weekend Mm -hmm. and she was 96 years old and she had 13 kids and like over a hundred grandkids, great grandkids. And she was like a really spiritual woman, psychic. 
Um, and she was a Taurus and she was very like just insanely strong, but also like really in touch with her emotions. I mean, she would like pray and Samoan and like tears would just be rolling down her cheeks and, you know, just the matriarch of the family. And it's made me kind of think a lot about what strength looks like, because I think, you know, I've always been a very sensitive person and, um, I always am somebody who's like, okay, like if your every feeling is valid, all your emotions are valid. And lately I've been kind of thinking about kind of like what you're saying about the character, like how do I tap into that kind of strength? Because there are times in our life where we have to like hunker down and just be, you know, the divine, we have to be the warrior, you know, and it's like warrior mode. And I feel like we're kind of in that right now, you know, and what does it look like for you to be like a warrior of love? You know, what is that strength? How do you, how do you, like, what's your armor look like? Like, what do you need to do in the morning to prepare? You know, like what? And I really have been kind of struggling with finding that for me. I mean, on one level, yes, people will say, you're so, you're a very strong person. You're doing all of these things. But for me, like, I know I'm, I know that there's a, I'm holding back a part of myself and I'm not really sure why, you know, it's almost like I'm afraid of seeing that, seeing that power. Um, and I'm thinking about it a lot lately. Okay. Now I'm going to get like real, because actually me and my partner are talking about having a baby and me getting pregnant. And I, you know, of course, all of the like conditioning of like, you have to like, you know, I've been working through all of that. And I kind of realized that, okay, maybe this is actually something I really do want in my heart. And I'm like, really scared, you know, about it. (laughs) And I'm like, my body, like, you know, like, can I really do that? Like, am I really able to do that? What, like, what do I need to tap into to tell myself? Yes, of course you can. No matter what happens, you can do it. And what, like me stepping outside of my comfort zone, what's it's going to take for me to step outside of my comfort zone. And that's always changing. And it's like, I'm, yeah. So I'm just really trying to like hone in on the spirit of my grandmother and how, you know, that warrior strength that can't, that came from such a deep love. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. so cool. That's so powerful. And I, like, I really, I felt it when you said this, like, especially to what you were saying around, like having this gift and being like, okay, let, like, how can I let this gift come through me? And like, still feeling, and I feel this too. I'm like, I feel like I'm holding myself back too. And I'm like, what is underneath that? What is going on? Like, what is that? I don't, I don't, can't like, I can't even intellectualize it. I can't even really like conceive of it in, in like a brain capacity, but I can feel that too. Yeah. And um, I think a lot of people are feeling that right now too. Yeah. And your point around like the, the warrior energy and just like the, the, like we need to show the fuck up <laughs> and like, how can mm-hmm. that move through us? Um, yeah. It's so I was very compelled, <laughs> very compelled yeah. by everything you just said. And that's also so exciting about the baby or the possibility of the baby. Possibility. Okay. I'm just like allowing myself to realize that I can do it mm-hmm. if I want it, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and that was a big step for me. I know for some people it's like not, you know, kind of easy to think that they could, but for me, I've always really like, it's always been a like, I don't know if I could kind of thing, um, or it could like actually try, you yeah. know, no matter what happens. But, um, also I was going to say one thing about like the, the not knowing like what that is, or, you know, you're holding back. I think it's also too, because we are all in this sort of state of our evolutionary process where we're kind of at this precipice of like, you know, awakening and things feel very much like they could either like shoot really quickly forward or go backwards. And I think there's going to be some people who unfortunately will kind of retreat in their own consciousness as a way to 
like protect yourself. Actually, I was listening to this like Eckhart Tolle talk he did recently, and he was talking about how what's the the most dangerous thing that's happening right now isn't necessarily what's go, what could possibly go wrong in the physical world, like war or you know fascism or whatever. It's what could happen in our own consciousness and how this could like instead of us growing in our consciousness from these experiences we rescind back in our consciousness mm -hmm. and you know i think that's what ha what's happening for all of us it's like we know our we're, we can like shift to a higher dimension or we can retreat and kind of not hunker down and knuckle back into the ground and be like no i'm just gonna stay in this place um and it's really attra it's really attractive to be you know like things don't have to change even though they you know they do yeah totally and it's like no matter what it's always scary like it, it is always scary yeah, yeah. you're gonna be scared regardless yeah exactly <laughs> and i think that that's to what we're talking about around like so many different experiences of reality right now which like you know has always been the case but i think it's like extra highlighted um and allowing like i i just feel for myself like the so much of like anything that i've expanded into in my life or like anything i've had the courage to do or like create or anything like that it's like it's about creating a relationship with fear <laughs> and letting that like letting there be familiarity in that because like the fear is always just mm -hmm. but, like if we can familiarize ourselves a little bit with like fear our relationship with fear itself it's like mm -hmm. even what we're talking about right now and and like i'm so on board with like yes i'm ready to expand my consciousness i'm ready to like right but like when it comes to it it's always terrifying it's always terrifying yeah. We yeah. were, oh, I'm ready or like yeah what that could that look like but it's always going to be in this like we have no idea we have absolutely no freaking no, we don't have any idea how it's going to unfold yeah and I guess like the one thing that keeps me I feel like more sane is the faith yeah. you know is faith that no matter what happens you always have something to surrender to and that's like the love the what is the true reality yeah. you know for me at least in my in from my perspective what the real the only reality is is love and so regardless of what happens even if you're not even conscious of it like that's all that's going on like you could be on a trip, you know, and for a day or whatever and be like, oh, this is like, you know, like, like how we do. And then you take a deep breath and you're like, oh yeah, like it's actually not that, it's this. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we're just constantly doing that over and over again. But yeah, when it's happening, it just feels horrible. <laughs> Absolutely. We're just free falling like what the <laughs> fuck is happening yes yeah um oh, awesome so to just kind of close out here in the next few minutes for anyone listening who is feeling really activated like i am i just i'm feeling like in your presence um what what would be a way for them to start connecting or start kind of um strengthening their relationship with their higher self um well i think i think it's a good idea to kind of get curious about other like people or teachers who have like different mediums of talking about it i mean for me like i think you know any kind of spiritual or healing or um, mystical teaching helps me kind of get in the zone you know like i'll be like if i'm really feeling like i'll be like okay i need to like watch something or read something to remind me like of this you know part of me that's beyond the physical um and it's like we can be so disconnected even though there's so many resources out there to do that whether it's like listening to podcasts or you know watching like a ram das lecture on youtube or you know picking up like a book that you heard was like you know 
like a Terrence McKenna thing or, or whatever, you know, to get really curious about the mystical realm and kind of go and explore it. Because, you know, for me, I have like ways to tap in, but it looks different for everybody. I mean, everybody has a different way of tapping in because every, we all have different, come from different places and we relate to things differently. But we can find these little portals there that work for us. But we have to like make the effort to explore, to take time to explore it. Sorry, it's my phone battery done. Um, to take time to explore it. And so, yeah, I would definitely just, you know, put on your little explorer cap and start investigating like things that you are curious about and just like put it like just download it you know yeah and you're gonna find the stuff that is like you're gonna find you're gonna read something or you hear something and be like oh like oh my god like that's it yeah. you know and that's gonna start it you know and you're just gonna keep going on that path and then also obviously like checking in with yourself every day you know writing a journal writing things down is, I mean, I write, the stuff I write down is like public, but, you know, writing your thoughts down or writing like, you know, how your a higher self perspective down is a really good way of staying in that place. Like I do workshops sometimes, or I did when we had things were open and I would go to colleges and we would do like, like a meme, higher self meme workshop. And we would like start off with everybody in the class writing down like a negative thought and then taking a the time to find the higher self perspective on it. And the things that people would write were like, oh my God, they're so good. Like so good. Because it really is just a practice of becoming aware of all this stuff that's been conditioned in us and how we can like just let it all go. It's actually like if you start, you know, doing that as a writing practice, it comes to you actually really, really quick and just get better at it all the time. Yeah, and just like trusting, like building that trust muscle to your point with like faith of just like trusting yeah. and being like, yeah, there it is. Yeah, but you, you have to be intentional about it because it's not, you can't, it's not just gonna be like you're doing everything you always do and all of a sudden it's just gonna, you, because that's not, the, you work on free will. You have to will it, you know, you have to will it to move through you. It's not gonna, it's, it's all about consent. It's not gonna just do it to you. You have to consent to it. To, you have to allow it. Yeah, yeah, that is, that's really, you have to invite it, invite it through. And yeah, I love mm -hmm. that. Um, it's all about like, you consent into it. Because I think too, and um, you know, so it, it can feel scary, like to our point with yeah. like the unknown and just kind of starting to explore that. I know when like I started to come to more awareness around this or exploring this in myself, I, I thought I was going insane. It can be really yeah. terrifying. So I love what you say too about like exploring different people, like listening. There's so many different ways to engage with um, mystery and other realms and like whatever we want to, whatever like language we want to give to it. Um, and different people, different teachings activate different people. So it's just like yeah. dabbling and, and almost in the energy of a lot of what we've been talking about of just like, shifting into trying it on and being like what might this be like hmm, what might that be like what might that be like yeah 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 and just kind of like being like oh you no know, i'm i'm not somebody that's like oh we need to identify as spiritual or whatever you want you know or mystical or a witch or whatever you want to say but sometimes it's like you kind of have to get like romantic about it and be like yeah i'm like this is like who i am and this is part of my life yeah. And like, you kind of have to like, put on your like wizard cape or whatever is going to get you in the mood and like get into your power, you yeah. know, like this is like all about like you are tapping in to something that you have complete access to. And it's like endlessly, like there's no end to it, it the discovery in it. Yeah. And you're like, you're a magical person you know, so like, it's time, you know, like, if you want to go there and be that and be that you can. Yeah. I love that. And just, you know, as the dating code, I hear it and I'm like, oh, it's like, it's a flirtation with this within yourself or like with this 
energy or whatever it is. And, and, um, there's like a courtship to it or they're, they're yeah. getting to know each other and, and getting yeah. like flirtatious together. It, yeah. It's intimacy. It's all, you know, your spiritual life is very, it's all about intimacy. It's mm -hmm. a very intimate relationship with yourself and nobody else can really know what it's like except for you, for you. Like you, it's never the same for anybody else. It's like your own intimate understanding. Awesome. That feels like a perfect note to end the conversation on. Thank you so much, Bunny. This just, of course. this was so much fun. Um, it was awesome. I had really enjoyed it. Yeah, me too. Thank you so much for coming on and really nice to connect with you. Um, and I'm just, yeah, it's so, it's really nice to um, feel into like how the, the depths that you're approaching all of this with. It's really cool. I felt that from your work already and I'm going to enjoy it this much more. Um, so thank you. Listeners, thank you. How can they find you? And I know you have a podcast too. What is your podcast? Yeah. My podcast is XO Higher Self mm -hmm. and it's on all platforms. And then you can follow me at, um, at Bunny Michael on Instagram and that'll keep you up to date with all the stuff. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so you. I had so much fun. <laughs>